It is sponsored by Squarespace. You know, I think I'm going to make a tonk. What's a tonk? Well, a tonk's like um, like a tank. It's a small tank for the game tonks. I suppose they couldn't call the game tanks. Well, what do you suggest I make? Are you serious? A deep frame diorama. Get the f*** out. Hello everyone! That was, that was way too optimistic. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 66. So I was sent this by Apocrypha now. You may remember the Fishing 28 game a while back, he sent me that as well. And this isn't a sponsored video, well, apart from Squarespace. Yeah, they, they sponsored the video. But I'm not sponsored by Tonks or Apocrypha now. Basically, this is free to download uh, on his website. So go down to the link, you can download the rules and play it yourself. I imagine this game is one of those games, you don't, you don't need a lot of space, you need one tank each. A little bit of terrain and you can play this probably on like a, a pub table with friends you know and it's a tall order uh, you need a pub table in a pub and friends i'm sure that's accessible for some of you but uh either way you can play it with your 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 mum or you you know you or you can play it with your kids they're kind of like friends just not very interesting ones more like colleagues uh, yeah, this game has kind of captured my imagination a bit, and I just really want to make a tonk. Now, a tonk isn't 28 millimeters, which is like would be like this big. Well, I've already kind of like found this little chunk of XPS foam. It's about that size. It's about that size. It's quite small. I'm thinking I can get the whole game in like a little shoebox and take it on holiday with me. My patrons currently at the moment are making tonks as we speak. I gave them this project early. I'm sure there's a hashtag. Uh, if you make a tonk, you can stick it up on Instagram. I'll put it here. Did that, did that look good? So here we go. Good old fashioned scratch building episode. No weird uh, pictures in a, in a deep frame with skulls and all that nonsense. None of that. What? Okay, what is your obsession? Honestly. I think it's like a perverse obsession of his to watch me foul. That's just the uh, tonks. So let's make some tonks. This is XPS foam. Basically, it's a little block I found that's the right size for a tonk. I'm not going to use this, I don't think. I don't think it's heavy enough. It's a bit flimsy, a bit light, uh, but it is the right size. So 70 millimeters by 50 millimeters, or five centimeters by seven centimeters. Uh, but let's design some tonks, shall we? I don't think I'm going to use that. Get rid of that. Now I don't know about you, but I always like to sketch my builds in my sketchbook before I build them. Uh, I like to just, you know, work out some ideas, what I like, what I don't like, just by doodling on a page, uh, like sketching, designing, planning, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna warn you, I'm really terrible at drawing tanks. I mean, just look at this one. Straight lines and perspective are my enemies, uh, mortal enemies. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter because I'm just trying to develop some ideas, uh, just different kinds of tracks, different positions for turrets and, you know, that kind of stuff. Like this one, for instance. I like the idea of a rusted tank being just lots and lots of plates of metal just hammered into position, you know, because they don't know how to weld. They don't really have any engineering skills. I think people, when they start a sketchbook, they think they need to be really good at drawing or every drawing needs to be perfect. It doesn't. Just just doodle, just scribble and, uh, you know, just find shapes. It doesn't have to be. It's a sketchbook. You know, it's not it's not a final piece.
All I'm looking for really when I sketch is the silhouette, the shape of the thing. You know, all these little details will come later. That's the fun part at the end, but it's just the shape of the thing is what I'm looking for. And it's also a good place to practice, you know, colors. You know, what colors are gonna look good on your piece at the end, you know? Um, but that's it. It's, it's a tool for you to use. It's not really for anyone else but you. So, you know, everyone should do a sketchbook. Everyone should sketch, even if you can't sketch or draw tanks like me. And there we go, a page of Tonk designs. Now I don't have to copy any of these designs. It's just a way of me developing ideas. Now I have a few ideas in my head. It may not look anything like these illustrations, but that's the whole point. So let's go make some. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website where you go to make websites. Now if you have no idea how to make a website, you don't know how to do with a HTML, is it HTML? I'm not sure. And you just want to make a website about things like, you know, like a pickle website, for example. Like, yeah, yeah, like that, like pickle perfection. That's it, Bill, click there. Uh, if you just want to make a website that's quick and easy and clean and nicely designed, then go to Squarespace. Uh, I made this website in like, you know, it must have been like 0.5 seconds. Maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure, but it was really easy and it looks pretty good. And I will add stuff to it at some point. But uh, yeah, if you want to make your own website, there's a sale going on at Squarespace. There's a little link down below. Go and have a look after the episode, obviously. Well, that was disappointing, wasn't it? Uh, these are Jenga blocks, uh, mini Jenga blocks from a mini Jenga game that I found in a charity shop. But I have lots of these sitting around and I think they may be a good size for my Tonk. Now they're, they're a bit smaller than seven centimeters by five centimeters, but it gives me room for tracks on the side and a little bit of room for like a, a ram on the front and maybe some turrets. You know, it gives me room. Plus they're solid uh, and I have lots of them. So I think I'm gonna use those as my base. So to stick these wood blocks together, we're going to use some wood glue because that's good at sticking wood, but it takes a long time to dry. So we're going to use some hot glue as a temporary hold. For some reason, I can't find any uh, hot glue sticks. I don't know where they all went. Um, now, wood glue takes a long time to dry. So if you put a little bit of hot glue in the middle there, just to hold it together temporarily, then the wood glue will, you know, dry over time and make that a permanent bond, you know, like a marriage or a mobile phone contract. So I made four blocks because I'm considering making four tonks, but I don't think I'll be able to make four tonks in this video. Maybe a future video if you enjoy this one. Are you enjoying it? Tell your face. Now I'm going to use a bit of this card to make my tracks. Uh, you know, it's not going to look very nice right now, but we're not going to see this card in the end. Don't worry, there's going to be so much crap on top of it. We're going to use the same have your cake and eat it gluing method. I, I, I like to call it that because it's like being married and having a girlfriend at the same time, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know what I mean, but you know, you know what I mean. Not me. Now this is junk box 22. This is uh, just full of random bits of junk, textured stuff mainly. I think I've tried to organize it in some kind of way. These are, you know, technical, detailed, textured bits, I think. Maybe not, I have no idea. So I'm just going to pad the tank out with whatever pieces of junk fit on top of my tank. Uh, this little thing and this little thing that even has a little lip on there, which would be quite handy as like a, a bumper, like a tank bumper. I don't know whether the tanks have bumpers. This thing is a window spacer, I believe. Uh, these things have really cool paneling textures on them. So I like to use those for panels. And this is half of the bottom of a toy car. Uh, I don't know where the other half is. I've probably used it at some point, but that will work really well on the back. So one key thing with building a Tonk is that the turret needs to rotate. Now I didn't mention this earlier because I completely forgot, uh, but I need to work out some way of making a rotating mechanism. Now I'm using these wheels from this old car uh, and I'm gonna make a hole in this little plug thing. And hopefully, I mean, that rotates and we just need to seal it the other end. But I, I'm just using a heat gun to melt the plastic. Probably not the best way to do it, but it's made a lip and the thing isn't coming out and it rotates smoothly enough. But, you know, it works pretty well. 
actually took me quite a while to figure this out. I don't know whether I'm stupid, but it, you know, it seemed like a really complicated thing for me. But uh, yeah, this kind of works. Now you all know I love EVA foam, you can get it in any craft shop, but uh, one of the main reasons why I like it is because, you know, if you want a bit of plastic to stick to another bit of plastic and it's not really, you know, bonding very well, stick a little bit of EVA foam between there and a lot of super glue and that is not coming off. This could be a turret, maybe? Nah, no, I don't like that. Maybe a little soy sauce bottle. Now one of my favourite tools is this, I think these are like pruning shears, uh, but they are so strong and they cut for anything, look. I mean, they're kind of scary. Also, don't forget to sand your plastics. You know, that helps the stuff stick together and it also helps the paint stick to your final build. So uh, remember to sand most plastics. I mean, I, I tend to sand all of them just in case. So a viewer kindly sent me a box of uh, these weird plastic shapes via my PO box. Now there was a little note inside saying that they were medical supplies, uh, a little bit off-putting, but apparently they're all sterilized or not used. But still, you know, a little bit off-putting. But there's some cool shapes in there, so you know. As long as it's not a box for the syringes, I'm okay. And I think that's it for my turret. That rotates well enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And this is a key from an old keyboard that Editor Bill smashed up, and I'm not sure why, he's got some problems. Uh, and that's just gonna bulk out the back there. So I'm gonna interrupt my own episode to tell you to join Patreon. Uh, and subscribe and like the video but mainly join patreon patreon at the moment we are all building tonks together there's quite a few interesting ones being built as we speak yeah if you'd like to take part in this little tonk challenge then go on patreon join patreon for like i don't know two pound a month it's like if you saw me in a pub and you'd be like oh let's build maker stuff hello bill hey bill let's build maker stuff you might not you know what i mean in your own voice you might want to buy me like a pint of beer that's all it really costs, like one pint of beer a month, or one cup of coffee a month, or two curly whirlies, maybe. About five chomps, probably about four fudges. Maybe a couple of bags, about four bags of straws, those little kid sized ones. It doesn't cost a lot, and you'll be supporting this channel, and this channel can just continue to grow and make things and entertain you slightly every couple of weeks. So join Patreon, uh, that's enough of that. So I get lots of questions in the comments about, you know, things like this. What's this? Well, this is obviously a Hulk Hogan uh, WrestleMania figure that I, that I have in my weird toy collection. Now I collect old toys from the 80s and 90s. You may have noticed little weird toys popping up here once in a while. I get lots of comments of people saying, wow, I used to have that, you know. Oh, I loved that toy when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. And then I just get cat to heart them all. So if you're anything like me, 40 years old, playing with toys in a cupboard, uh, you don't have to be 40, you can be any age. Then go and follow Slimehouse TV. I'll put a link for his channel down below. Slimehouse TV is uh, run by a guy named Theo Kane. Now he's got quite a following on Instagram for all his old 80s and 90s toys. And he's even making his own toys in the future, which is quite cool. Like I just really enjoy his channel and uh, he doesn't have a lot of subscribers. And I, I want to give him a shout out because you know he deserves more. He used to swear quite a lot in his earlier videos. I, I will give you a little warning in there but uh you know he's turned that all around he's a he's a nice lad now but honestly really entertaining channel his passion is kind of um infectious you know like he's so passionate about stuff it kind of makes me want to collect more toys which is a little bit a bit dangerous if you don't do it now when are you gonna do it probably when you're a kid actually and i think that's about it promotion over tonk tonk time You know, you've really got to look out for those passionate infections. You know, stay safe, kids. Uh, this is my Greebly box, one of many Greebly boxes. Now it's time to Greebly up the tank. I often get asked, where do I start with Greebly boxes? Basically, just look for any plastic shape that's small and would make a cool detail on something. Just any plastic shape can make a cool detail on something. Just collect stuff, uh, look in craft shops, pound shops, places like that. And it gets easier the more you scratch build. You know, the more you scratch build, the more you start seeing little plastic shapes. You'll see it everywhere. Kids' toys, bits of recycling, uh, your wife's makeup drawer, just all sorts of things. You know, you get the matrix vision, as Scratch Bashing would put it. You know, you'll just see shapes everywhere. So I'm using little tiny squares of EVA foam as metal panels on the tank, as if like it's been repaired over and over and over again. 
So a viewer kindly bought these things off of my wish list for me. Uh, I think they're nail art things. They're like little tubes, uh, really small little tubes, really good little details. I'm going to use them here as exhausts. And I imagine they're really good for like bead bots and things like that. So thank you very much. Now, obviously for wires, we're going to use some generic holiday wire, you know, the last of the good batch. Now this scale, I believe it's like 172 scale, 15 millimeters if you're a little guy. This isn't the scale I usually work in, but I'm actually finding this quite fun. You know, it's quite interesting using my same junk for a smaller scale. Now this is a hair curler and it will make quite a cool little grill on the front. Maybe a couple of railings on the back there. And I guess I need to start thinking about the tank wheels, the wheelie bits, the tanky wheels, tanky wheelies, uh, the treads, the tracks, I don't know what you call them. So my thinking is this is a tank for the people of respite and they don't really know how to make tanks so they use any kind of round uh, thing disc hemispherical thing gear cog wheel whatever to make the tracks because they don't really have you know sufficient engineering knowledge a little bit more than the rusters but it also makes it look really interesting and detailed So I've ever told you how much I love EVA foam. I, I do, I love EVA foam. It's one of those things that I've seen in a shop for years. I'm like, what do people use EVA foam for? And obviously it's for tank tracks. Now I'm not gonna stick these on neatly at all uh, because it adds to the jankiness of it and it makes it look a little bit like a little metal slug tank, a little little cartoon character tank, which is what I'm going for. A cute little tonk. Aww, look at him. Let's see if he can walk. Go on boy, off you go. Aww. So that was a tank for respite. Let's make one for the rusters. Look at this lid. I have no idea what this was for, but look at this, look at the shape of it. And uh, I think that could be our little turret on top there. We'll keep that for later. Good thing about lids is they come with holes already. I mean, I had to widen the hole a bit. Uh, there's a rude dad joke in there somewhere, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do the same technique as I did earlier, you know, melt a little plastic lip and there we go. It's not quite as good as the other one, but it rotates, which is enough. What you looking at? These are some googly eye things. I think they might be Mr. Potato Head eyes or maybe for stickle bricks. I don't know. They're gonna be tank turrets from now on. I've decided. Look, like it rotates and everything. I feel kind of like an engineer at this point. I'm, I'm really proud of myself. Are you proud of me, father? Father. You know, we shouldn't look to fathers for approval. I'm a father myself and I have a son and uh, he always looks at me for approval, you know, and I'm just like, nah. Until you can make a tank out of a spray bottle. I'm not really interested. You know, he can wipe his own ass at this point, but that's just not, not really cutting it, you know, not good enough. One day. I'm liking the shape of that so far. What do you think? Well, I don't care what you think. So I didn't spend as long on the tracks for this vehicle because they're pretty much going to be covered up with plates and plates of metal. These are scary plastic pumpkin teeth. I guess you drew those into a pumpkin to make them extra... Oh, whoops. Found them. Uh, I'm just going to stick those there. Now this is a tube from a spray bottle and this is a cake pop stick. Now I'm going to combine the two to create the ultimate exhaust pipe. I may be exaggerating a little bit. So another rule in Tonks is that if you shoot the rear of someone else's tank, it hurts them more. You know, like it, like in films and, you know, when you go around shooting tanks. I know, I know it's like that for me. I imagine the rusters couldn't figure out how to fit all the petrol, or sorry, gas inside the vehicle, so they've just stuck it on the back. We have a couple of gas barrels and a couple of pipes, you know, it'd be fine.
So I just found these in my bits box. I, I think they're little parts of a game called Mastermind where you have to kind of like code break, something like that, I don't know. But they're kind of cool little gas tank shapes. So I'm gonna stick those on the back for extra, you know, gas tankiness. You know what, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what it needs? About 50,000 pieces of EVA foam just stuck all over it. So I'm gonna use this little tracer wheel thing. I think it's to trace little dotted lines on leather and material, uh, but I'm gonna use it to make little dents and holes in the foam before I stick it on the tank. Texturing. So now there's the monotonous task of sticking plates and plates of metal all over this tank. Well, not metal, EVA foam. You know, plates of metal probably would be a little bit trickier, but uh, you know, EVA foam to look like little plates of metal. Really colourful metal. You know what I mean. that took a while does, does that look silly it looks kind of silly in a good way i'm not sure but it's it's kind of silly we'll see let's just paint it and see how it goes shall we Better, still a little bit silly, but you know, in a good way. They're kind of silly in a good way. Because they're tonks, they're not tanks. Tanks can be as anal as they like, but not tonks. Tonks are silly because they're called tonks. So I'm going to go for a rusty undertone as per usual. A bit of this Fire Giant Orange and Satchel Brown speed paints. Uh, they work really well. They do just sort of seep into the gaps and add a bit of a, a weird kind of depth to the colour. I'm just going to cover up with acrylic paint anyway. But you don't want to hear about that. Paint time with Bill is boring time with Bill and boring time with Bill is story time with Bill. So as most of you know, everything I build on this channel has a bit of story behind it, has a bit of lore, and it all kind of exists on a made up world that's made up in my head. I'm not insane, stick with me. I like to keep everything canon. Uh, like I like the idea of things interacting with other things in this world. It just adds a bit of weight and a bit of story to everything, and it just makes it more interesting for me and hopefully for you. So we'll start with this one. This one is the human tank made by the citizens of Respite. They live in a town in the center of a desert surrounded by mountains of rusty metal. Now in these rusty mountains live a tribe of people called the Rusters. Now the Rusters are constantly harassing the people of Respite because you know the citizens of Respite kind of stole their home a long long time ago. None of the uh, current citizens remember that or acknowledge that but they like to fight in the desert. Now I like to imagine they have little vehicle battles. Now no one in Respite knows how how to actually engineer weapons really you know weapons are outlawed throughout the universe uh, apart from this world which is what attracted them there in the first place so i imagine they had to find this turret somewhere in the desert and i imagine the rusters had to do the same thing one day long ago a citizen of respite came across a wing of a spacecraft sticking out of the desert with a turret on it now this turret is the turret you see here and uh, they thought, you know, we can use this turret, we can put this on a vehicle and make ourselves a tank. Now, this citizen knew this was part of an aircraft of some kind, and there's usually two wings. Uh, there was a big rock in the middle that the aircraft probably smashed into, and the wing would just be on the other side of that rock. Now, what he didn't know was on the other side of that rock was a, a gang of rusters basically thinking the same thing. 
So obviously they eventually met in the middle and they fought. The humans fought the Rusters, the Rusters killed the humans, back and forth. This went on for a while until it was like a bit of a stalemate and they just decided to back away taking the one turret each. The citizens of Respite went back and made their tank, which is this tank here, and the Rusters went back and attempted to make their tank, which was basically just like a vehicle with loads of metal just chucked on top of it. So for years in the desert, whenever these tanks would cross paths, they would fight. They would have a tank battle out in the middle of the desert, you know, back in behind rocks, trying to outmaneuver each other, firing at each other constantly, and they never seem to hit each other. It always seems to just miss its target just by a meter or so. Uh, and no one could really explain why. Now these battles went on for years and years. So many people got killed, you know, anyone standing near the tank, anyone, you know, hanging off the back of it would just get hit, falling off. Lots of people died, but the tanks always survived. And, uh, you know, no one could really explain why. Even the humans were a little bit kind of freaked out. Like, you know, they're not very superstitious, but they're like, what is going on? We, we, we aim directly at the other Ruster tank and we just couldn't hit it. And the same for the Rusters. They couldn't hit the human tank. So there's nothing mystical about it, nothing supernatural. Basically, these turrets were both from the same aircraft. Now, these aircrafts, thousands of years ago, had a safety feature. If they're firing mid-air and they happen to cross sights with each other, they would stop firing or they would fire just left or right of the other turret so they don't blow each other up in the sky. So this mysterious safety feature is never known by anyone in Respite or the Rusters and they just constantly fight. Uh, they're okay when they're fighting against other vehicles and shooting at buildings and anything else. They just can't kill each other. So they're destined to be locked in battle forever, you know, or they could just give up. So there we go, Tonks. I made two in the end. Oh, I plan to make four. Um, maybe two more in another video if you're interested in that. Let me know in the comments down below. But I really enjoyed making them. Uh, I really enjoyed it. The rotating turret thing seemed like a really simple thing to do, but for some reason it was really tricky for my brain to get around. This bit needs to move and this bit needs to be fit. But it worked. So next week I'm on holiday. I mean, uh, you know, a certain part of England uh, where they grow walls of corn for two weeks uh, with family. It's a family holiday. Every year, family stuff. It's always when uh, there's like bring out your lead and things like that. When there's things I want to go to, now I have to go to a family holiday and have fun with my family. There will be lots of lore and sketches and drawings in my sketchbook because I do a lot of drawing on the holiday and that's going to go straight up on Patreon. So don't forget to join Patreon for that. And I may get a game of Tonks in with uh, Dan Does. If you don't know who Dan Does is, he's just some other channel, some other craft channel on YouTube. I'll stick a link down below for his channel. Just, just to shut mum up. Don't forget to check out Tonks. Uh, download the rule set down below and play it and let me know how it goes on Instagram. I've got a PO box down below if you want to send me anything uh, that you think I could use to build stuff with. Or even if you want to send me some old toys from the 80s and 90s, uh, I'd happily receive them. I just love annoying the postman. Um, they hate me. So that's it. Anything from you, Cat? Deep frame diorama. He's never going to let that go. I'll see you next time, okay? Tonks, 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 tonks. I feel like we need a theme song for tonks. I was I was considering making a theme song for this episode, but I didn't. But there you go, my tonks. I'm really happy with my tonks. They're going to look really good on my shelf, and I'm going to use them to play a game over my holiday break with, you know, someone. I'm not going to mention his name again. He's already had his mention. But what did you think? Comments down below, like, subscribe, all that. And thank you, patrons. I mean, seriously. Thank you, patrons. We are building lots of tonks on Patreon at the moment. I can't wait to see the tonks. I'm probably going to include them in the next episode. So get building. Enjoy.